Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. The box look familiar? Yeah. Back to back Kingwear reviews. This is their new packaging and this is their new fitness watch. Let's, oh, look at that. IP68, serious swimming watch. Aha, they sent a red one. Oh, I was hoping for a red one. All right, let's get in here and see what this thing is all about. This is a really interesting packaging. Slides out, lots of icons. Hi, wow. <laughs> I'm always getting my reflection. Mirror, mirror in the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? This watch, that's who this is the Kingwear FS08 from Banggood. Yeah, there's that lovely word. We love the word transflective. Yes, a transflective TFT screened GPS. Yes, and heart rate monitor, pedometer, compass in it as well. Cool. Oh, yeah. As soon as I heard that Kingwear had a transflective screen watch. Now, for those of you who don't know, if you've seen the Amazfit uh, Pace or the Amazfit Smartwatch 2 Stratos, they are um, the same kind of transflective screen. We've also had some other small um, fitness band things like the Hey 3S and the uh, BIP and the Core and those, well, not the Core, but the BIP. Anyway, I digress. A transflective screen, you're going to see it in a minute, it means you can see it better in the sunlight than you can indoors. More light, the better. But it also is backlit. So what we have is a 1.26 inch, good size diameter of fitness watch. It's actually a round watch. Kingwear FS08. It's Android 5.0 or iOS 8 compatible and running Bluetooth 4.0. Very good stuff. Uh, it is IP68. You're going to have a fine time swimming and washing and everything with this one. It's got all C support listed for everything. GPS, heart rate, compass, a sleep monitor, pedometer. It's got an exercise plan built into it. Calories and distance calculations from your steps. Alarm clock, stopwatch, and so forth. Yeah, it's got a buzzer, but no sound from what I could... Uh, could tell and no support for a TF card, no extension card capability there. The screen, the hardware, a little bit of memory, not a whole lot. Again, it's a fitness watch, not an Android type of a watch. B uh, built in G sensor and um, a plastic stainless steel PVD band. All right, not the TPU, but the PVD. Here we go. First, the packaging. Magnanimous, I love, that's not a word by the way, I just like to use it. Uh, I don't think it's a word. Anyway, there it is, it, no bands attached. It comes as this little chiclet right here. Uh, we can open up and find that inside we have a user's manual, we'll get to that, and a screen protector, for those of you who like to put those things on. And the red bands, yeah. Red and black, we'll attach those. And then it looks like underneath here is the charging cable. And it looks like it's the standard kind. Nowadays, not only does it have to have the four pins and the magnets, but you have to look to see if there's any guide pins in the middle. We just reviewed a watch that had that added to it. So these we thought were going to be universal. Now it looks like there's going to be a variety of them. So you have to find the right kind. But this one's definitely the universal magnetic. Holds the watch. Good strong magnets. Ready to go. Charging cable. You can get extras of these too. Okay. I'm going to put the bands on. Oh, oh we got to look at the user's manual. I'm going to put the bands on and get it ready here in a moment. But first... It's in English all the way. Look at that. Oh, no. Chinese on this side. Okay. <laughs> I've never gotten one yet that's just English, at least not from the Chinese watches. Uh, here's some notes and some information about the main functions and basic operation. All the different things in it, the compass and the stopwatch and so forth. Little introductory information. It has various sports modes. That's what the screen uh, will be looking like when it's lit up, I presume. And 
A few more things about cycling and running. You have mountain climbing support. Overall history. Uh -huh. Then you're going to link it to the app by scanning the QR code. Um, and it's an interesting app. We're going to be talking a bit about the app. No doubt it's different than what you've seen before. There it is. It's called Link2. Link2. You can go to the Google Play Store and download that if you would like. Uh, I'm not as happy with it as I could be. Uh, it's got some limitations so far. But it's a relatively new area for Kingware to be diving this deep into it. So hopefully they'll enhance it and work with it a little bit better in the future. Some more notes and some troubleshooting information. And the warranty certificate when you get the watch and your warranty record. And then we should be in the Chinese half of the manual that goes the other direction. All righty, let's put it together and give it a run. Wow, nice. Look at that special offset designer watch band. They're getting really creative, really good. I've got two buttons. I got one on this side. I'm going to press and hold, and that should vibrate and light it up so bright you can't even see that it says smartwatch in that circle. It's a purple circle. There we go. We're getting a uh, colors running and all sorts of things happening. And there's another little. Uh, not little, but actually, oh, that's a nice watch face. Nice big button over here that I believe will activate the sport mode. Puts you right into your sport mode. And this one will bring you home and you can slide around. Now, you notice it went dim, but look, you can still read it. It's reflecting the light inside, which isn't all that bright. So I'm not getting you a really good bright screen. I'll get a uh, flashlight in a minute but you can still read it. You'll be able to read it really, really good outside. And if you tap the button, it'll light it back up again. You got a few different watch faces. Well, you don't press and hold, you just press touch and it goes. And there's switch to another one. And then this really bright contrasty um, black on white, which when it goes off, which should be in a second, you'll still be able to read it in the dark. Nice, huh? I think it's still on, but a little bit dim. I've set it to have like a 10 second timeout. There you go. So even indoors, you can read it okay, but with the backlight, you can like really read it well. And you can switch watch faces simply by touching it. If I scroll down, ha, I've got a compass that I need to do this figure eight thing to enable. There we go. And it's coming up. Okay, I think it's pretty accurate. I may need to do a little bit more to get it there. And look, it's still active even when the screen is off. So if you're out hiking and you're following a trail and you're trying to keep a certain degree to get to your next waypoint, you don't have to be turning your watch on all the time to find it. It's going to stay in the compass. There, sold already. Don't even need to review more. Nobody else does that. When you try to touch it, it's locked, which is cool. But when you unlock it, you can scroll some more. So there's the compass. Here's a stopwatch. Here's your, um, your barometric pressure. And I guess it needs to get a orientation and zeroed in. Uh, it's 999 on the 1000 scale, I guess. It's showing me zero pretty much right where I'm at now, down two meters. You know, it's going to be plus or minus a certain tolerance based on changes in barometric pressure. But it, it's real. It really is working in the watch. And if you go up and down, you're going to be able to see the change in altitude. Here's the uh, heart rate section. And I believe all we need to do is touch it. And it's going to start testing using the PPG technology. That's that little green diode you see on the back. And it's really fast. Comes back and it seems to be accurate. Nice, huh? Okay. Interesting colors, this blue and red and pink and whatnot. It's uh, real time, continuous reading your heart rate. It says click to end. But before I do that, let's give it a little bit longer. Again, I set the timeout for 10 seconds. Some of these faces, it keeps the light on. Other ones, it turns the light off. So it looks like on blood pressure, it's going to keep it lit up. So if you're out there working and you're watching your heart rate, well, it's going to eat battery a little bit more, of course, because it has the backlight on. But as long as you have this uh, in this mode, it's going to keep giving you your heart rate and showing it to you nice and bright. 
If you're in the sunlight, having the backlight on is not going to be a detractor because it's still going to have the transreflective capability. It's when you're indoors that you want that light so it stays uh, visible. Okay, it's still working. Click to end. And I could go into the history. Then there's some history of my heart rate over time. Got a couple of them in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. High, low, and average. And the date and time that it happened. Nice. Okay, your sleep time, deep sleep, light sleep, standard thing, and total minutes of sleep last night. Oh, and it looks like there's a dot down there, so you can go over here and see that you have a chart available to you. I tried it last night on Sunday, I guess, and there's the information on the watch from that sleep cycle. It's all in here. And then we've got uh, your step count, which I haven't done today, but I did a little bit here, and there's some information from there. Okay. And then we are back to our time display. So rotating up or down is going to loop you through those screens, right? Going over to the left is going to get you to notifications like most watches do. And going to the right, it's going to get me now into my uh, fitness mode. Now, here's where it gets fun. You have all these different activities, walking, cycling, and running. You've got climbing with altitude because it's got the barometer in there. And then you've got a history and settings. Now, if I go into my history, you'll see that I have been using this a little bit. Yay! Here's uh, three different things I did. Cycling times. Uh, here's another grouping of three, cycling and running and walking. And if I go into one of these, I get the trajectory, not against a map per se, but the basic trajectory that I cannot like try and uh, expand. It just is there. You have all these dots showing you that you have all this other information. There's heart rate, and it was such a short thing, but you know it's showing you the different zones of your heart uh, during that workout. Um, you have all of this information and more information and more information. And that's all for a run. Then you can, of course, do different sports. Here's a typical cycling. Here's a long one. There's uh, the track itself and heart rate, I guess. And here we go. Some more information, average speed. Yeah, I was riding with Mrs. Tix in the car, like usual when I'm testing these things to get a 59.67 kilometers per hour. By the way, have not seen how to change this data to um, Imperial. It's always in metric and your pace and whatnot. And then you can delete the record as your last screen there. So these things are here. You have the ability in the settings to turn on a metric Imperial. Wow. Okay, let's turn it to Imperial. I thought I did that. All right, and then um, it, it can remind you every mile, it says. I must have forgotten to turn that on because it was kidding me every kilometer. Well, maybe I can then. You can switch it to miles, and you can have it remind you every kilometer. And then here's a uh, pace reminder, too. If you wanted to turn that on, you can change your pace. Okay, and... Have, uh, uh, have it uh, notify you by lighting up and vibrating when that happens as well. And I'm going to turn that off, I think. There we go. Okay, that's everything here. And the last thing is this funny looking little blue thing. This is actually your app drawer. You don't scroll anymore to get to your apps. You touch here. And here's where you have your main menu, where you download the associated app, and that's the QR code. You could scan it off of your screen right now if you want to, or go to the Google Play Store and download it directly. Then you link to the app, and you have to use this particular QR code that's associated with this watch in order to bind with the app. Very nice uh, method of doing it. And you'll see that on the app that you have these different choices of watches that the app supports. You have your Bluetooth where you can power it on and show visibility. And then uh, your overall notification uh, information, which is the same as what we saw when we swipe over to the left. Your remote capture, 
will let this be a camera button to take a picture from your phone. Sedentary reminder, your overall settings for your clock, which of course is going to sync automatically to your app. Reminders, uh, your display. Here's where I've got the brightness set to four. Let's turn it down so it's not so washed out. In fact, there's what it is at one. And I think right now that's going to be plenty bright. Uh, let's run it with one. Yeah, you can barely see the words brightness. Oh, no wonder. It still says brightness four. It didn't take. Okay, I'm going to all the way down and say okay. Now it says brightness one. Screen timeout. You can have as little as five seconds and all the way up to one minute. So if you're using it indoors, you definitely can have a long uh, time on. And because of the transreflective screen, overall, it's lower power. So you're still, I'm pretty sure, going to get really decent battery life even if you run it with the backlight on for a long time. In fact, for the sake of the review, because it locks the screen when it goes out, I'm going to go ahead and set it for 60 minutes, and it is. Now it won't be timing out on me. International lets you uh, choose your language, and here's the different language this device supports. We'll run through that list. Not extensive, but... Hey, Hebrew's there this time. Sometimes we get asked that. Okay, the Dutch guy. It's Dutch and Dutch. It's Dutch and Dutch. So I, they're both there. Now you can't say I don't know what I'm talking about because I don't know what I'm talking about. But it's <laughs> Dutch and German. Thank you for correcting me, guys. Motion. Here's the uh, wake-up gesture. It's off, but I can turn it on. And then when I am off and I twist my wrist, it should light the backlight, and it does. Okay, where were we? We were over here, in here, all the way down to settings here, and we were looking at display, right, or motion. Then you can reset the watch. You have a screen sleep switch. You can turn that on. Not sure totally how that works, but it. Uh, I guess it's going to sleep the screen. Uh-oh. Oh, good. <laughs> Something for you to play about. And then about. So those of you who are following the technical details, here's the uh, information you need and probably the firmware versions and release date and time. Okay. Back button for that. And that's everything here. Is that everything? That looks like it, right? All right. That's the settings. Then you have alarms and calendar. You have a calendar in here. It's a simple one like that and that. You can go ahead and back by days and a calculator. So you can use this watch for doing basic calculations. And they're readable on the screen right there. And that's level one, you know, on, it, it's a it's a bright watch. It's going to be pretty good outdoors. OK, and you're back to the watch faces notifications and I can't get out of it other than to click it to get out of that and then looping to everything the calendar uh, the compass and all these different factors now let's take a look at the associated app this was the good news let me share the app with you here it is it's called link to don't put a space in it if you search for it in the Google Play Store it'll pop right up if you put the space in there it's really hard to find once you download it, you can find out a little bit about it. Uh, when you go in, it tells you that it's an application that integrates the data and services of the Kingwear wearables, which provides a complete, unified, and convenient experience for users. Yes, real English. It can check for your daily exercise date, data, trajectory, sleep, calories, and so forth. And um, it currently at this point was supporting the KW18. We've reviewed that one. The GV68. Yep, seen that one. The GT88. Oh yeah, we've reviewed that one and other models. But these were a year ago and this has only come out recently. This is version 141, December 4th, 2017 and only a thousand downloads. So I'm saying it's kind of new, it's kind of buggy, and it's got a little ways to go. What I want to do is show you from the pictures what it's supposed to do. On this opening page, you're able to do a uh, track, and it's kind of this whole reversed video thing, 
that shows you where you are. And it's really, really cool if it works that it keeps track of everything. If you jump in a car and drive, it knows that. If you're walking, it knows that. If you're running, it knows that. If you're flying, I don't know. But it does all of this stuff and it gives you some information if it works. Unfortunately, I'm not getting the tethering happening for the track section of the app. The next page shows you all of those moving details like I was talking about. When and where and how much all of this stuff happened throughout that day. Almost like how the Google Locate stuff does, um, but even more sophisticated because it's got these different modes that can track all of that when it works. Um, then it's got this whole thing that shows you your step count, when you did those steps, all of that. And then you've got this, which is showing you details on um, that stuff. You're waking up, your sleep quality, and when you went to bed, and your trajectory of sleep, I guess. I don't know. I haven't seen it like that. Usually it's a horizontal kind of a thing. But anyway, this is a, your sleep over awareness time stuff. Here's your heart rate information, average and highest and so forth. So all of that is here in the app. However, it's not really working that way for what I'm getting. So let's take a look at it anyway. I'm going to open it up and I want to show you that it's going to try to uh, find my area here, which of course we're going to switch off of and take you over here to the settings where I'm going to touch this and show you that it's bound to this device. And I can find the device by pressing that button and it's vibrating right now. And it says, OK. OK, cool. Stop. And we're done with that. And then take us back out of there. This is in a personal center. And if you create an account and log in, you can put in all of your stuff here. Otherwise, you go in here anonymously and you can fill out the information you're going to need for it to properly calculate your calories burned and your distance traveled and all of those things. And you save it. And that's your about you, the settings, contacting them. And you can invite friends to participate. You've seen where the band is over there. Here is where you have your health data. Now, this is a supposed track of my heart monitoring over time. And I think you can expand it. Yeah, there you go. See, you can actually expand the chart and you can get your average information. So the heart rate part of this is working. And if I tap here, it synchronizes the latest data from the watch to um, the uh, phone. And then there's the sleep information. If you've done uh, overnight with it, you should be able to get that sleep information there. This one is your step count. Not working. It's not transferring this. I've tried everything. I can get my uh, sleep or step information. I didn't have it for today, but I had it for other days that you saw. And uh, it should show you that information just like you saw on the display in the app at the App Store but it's not really working. And if I hit here, it's going to use the internal GPS of the phone to locate where I am on Earth and show me my track. However, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to transfer the data from your watch over to the phone and you could see your various tracks in the app over here. So we've got a really cool new Kingware watch. We've got an app that supports three of the earlier ones we've reviewed, which weren't nearly as sophisticated as this one, but it's a work in progress. And we have this available to you right now from Banggood. It's a really cool watch. Check the uh, show notes down below. Anticipate a lot of growth as this thing matures uh, into a robust app that will allow the true tethering and data analysis. Until that time, though, you're going to have a really awesome standalone watch with a transflective screen that you can see in bright sunlight. And you can run things like the heart rate monitor or the compass and have it doing that when the light is off. Uh, all sorts of capabilities here. You can check your altitude going up and down while you're hiking. Many, many possibilities. So give us a check 
at uh, banggood.com if you're interested and uh, pick this one up and we appreciate your like of this video and your subscription uh, we're really hitting uh, some landmarks and that's attracting a lot of interest to uh, get some product information out for you so the more we have the more we have we'll see you again soon